I think what impresses me most about Andrew Baird is that he was a man of very humble roots. He was born in the Borders area of, of Scotland and uh, trained as a blacksmith. And by the time he was in his mid to late teens, he had developed a significant case of wanderlust and headed north, took a job as a lighthouse keeper and uh, decided, I think, that that sort of tranquility wasn't really in line with what he wanted to do with his life and moved further south to Glasgow. He got a job at uh, one of the large shipyards and worked there for a few years. And then something happened that disengaged him with that life and looked around for something else to do and found that there was a smithy for sale on the Isle of Butte. And in the first few years that he was there, he very quickly became part of the island life. In the early 1900s, one of the big obsessions and joys of the population was flight. The Wright brothers had done their first flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Blerio, as part of a contest, had crossed the channel successfully. Flight Magazine was one of the popular magazines of the day. And Andrew Berry got caught up in this. He became very, very interested in flight. And in 1909, the first Aero, the first aviation exhibition in Britain was held in Blackpool. And Andrew Baird decided that was something he was going to. And while he was there, he met all the aviators of the day, saw all the planes of the day, got ideas on what, what impressed him in terms of what a plane should look like. And on the long trip back to, to Butte, decided that what he would do is build his own plane. He designed it by incorporating parts of successful planes that he had seen when he was in Blackpool. And he sourced all of the parts in Scotland. And that's one of the things that makes this event unique is that it is the first all Scottish designed and built plane. By mid-1910, the plane was, was complete. He took it to a flat beach, Ettrick Bay, to have the attempt to fly it. He taxied along the, the beach and off it lifted, lasted for eight or 10, 12 seconds, turned to the to right and put itself back down on the, on the beach. It was not the longest flight of all time, or the highest flight of all time, or, or certainly not the most controlled flight of all time. Andrew Blaine Baird, in that moment, had achieved the first attempt at all Scottish heavier than air powered flight. So in that moment, he had achieved his dream. And what we at the Baird Butte Society take from that moment is the whole mission and notion of the society to assist the youth of Scotland to aspire to their own dream and to assist them to realize it. I'm Lord Smith of Kelvin, uh, that's my fancy title. In fact, I was brought into this world as Robert Smith uh, and I'm the patron of the Beard of Butte Society. I think Chris Markwell's done a wonderful job of just seizing on this, the humble blacksmith in Butte and saying he achieved his dream and by making awards to people who've achieved their dreams and have achieved so much in life. And the message really for the Beard of Butte Society is apart from celebrating his life, is to say to young people in Scotland, live the dream. Do you just have a bit of inspiration, work hard, and it's astonishing what you can achieve in life. And through scholarships and programmes around schools, and indeed the awards that we're about to present in September, uh, that encourages people to, to go out and really try their very best. The Baird of Butte Society has begun the rolling out of its programmes a few years ago. And the first of these is a very exciting one. It's the Baird of Butte Society Canadian Science Scholarship. And it's offered annually to selected students who've finished sixth form and have been accepted by a Scottish university to take chemistry, biology, life sciences, or the like. Hi, I'm Joshua McFadden, and I'm studying biomedical science at Glasgow Caledonian University. The Canadian Scholarship took the form of From Bench to Bedside. Those three weeks were just probably the most amazing, hardest work I've ever done in my life. Like, we delved deep into science, like this is the nitty gritty of the science. We went to um, Dr Gunning's lab. Uh, my name's Patrick Gunning, I'm an associate professor at the University of Toronto Department of Chemistry and I'm a Canada Research Chair in Medicinal Chemistry and we're developing new drugs uh, to target uh, various human cancers that currently have uh, a poor prognosis. I have a team of really bright, inspired individuals who have worked extremely hard and have been dedicated and motivated uh, to develop two molecules that are going into 
um, preclinical and advanced preclinical trials for brain cancer um, and for acute myeloid leukemia. Ultimately, that's my goal is to get into humans with these molecules to, to try and uh, alleviate these really horrible diseases. We started in pure chemistry, just then um, showing us like how they start and um, change side chains of molecules and different techniques that they use. And we got to see cancer cells and they were um, given fluorescence, like that was inserted to, into them genetically. And if the drug that they're um, creating is working, then they'll show up. The more of that, the better. And it's targeting a specific molecule, the STAT3 molecule. And that's found in 70% of all cancers. So if they can target this molecule, then that could basically eradicate 70% of cancers. The final part is that they are in Toronto at a number of institutions. In, in those environments, they move from what was theoretical and what was being scientifically developed into the actual delivery of that science to the patient at the bedside. And then following on from that week is where we moved to the bedside. We spent time moving around the different hospitals in the Toronto area, seeing how these um, drugs that have been created are actually used. Bear to Butte Society Canadian Science Scholarship recipients travel to Canada where they're hosted by the Centre for Clinical Ethics and its relationships with Providence Healthcare, St. Joseph's Health Centre, St. Michael's Hospital, Lee Cashin Knowledge Institute and so on, which allows them to access some of the, the brightest people in healthcare, science, biology, chemistry that are available in the world and in so doing, not only have knowledge passed to them, but build relationships that will stand for them for the rest of their lives. The programme, understandably, is called From Bench to Bedside. And it's been very successful to this point, and so much so that starting in 2016, the uh, Scottish Government is supporting its introduction across all of Scotland. I think the Beard of Beard Awards are, are very important. Um, the two people that we're honouring in September uh, are just outstanding in their field. Eleanor, who, who's uh, going to be picking up the Innovation Prize, a professor at the university where she qualified. Now, she went to school on Butte, just a wee girl on Butte, and now she's a top professor, renowned around the world for the research that she's done. Yeah, I'm uh, Eleanor Campbell. So I'm the Chair of Chemistry at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so I, I am a chemical physicist. Um, so I'm very interested in exploring how molecules behave and what makes them behave the way they do. Uh, and I'm also very interested in, in making little devices uh, with, with carbon nanotubes, which are fascinating little nanomaterials. The Beard of Butte Award is it, it's a very nice thing to get, I think, especially for a brandine. Um, I'm very honored to, to get that award. And uh, I would like to think I have been really quite innovative in my scientific career, and innovation can mean very different things. I mean, I'm not a great entrepreneur. I haven't formed a company that's making lots of money. But I think innovation is, is much more than that side of it. And I think it is about creativity, and it's about applying that creativity um, to do unusual things that can lead to other things that, that may well be useful or, or may just increase our knowledge of, of how nature works and, and how things function. And Dr McConnell, again, if you step onto an Airbus 350, he was the guy who designed that. Now, isn't that fantastic? These people from relatively humble backgrounds, Scots again, went out and have succeeded against world competition. So for us to make these awards, people can look and say, I could do that. And I think that's what's important about it. My name is Gordon McConnell. I'm an aeronautical engineer. I've been working in the aviation industry for 40 years since I graduated from Paisley College of Technology. First of all, it's a great honor to, to win, win the award in 2015 and have the, the recognition of, uh, of fellow Scots of what I've achieved uh, during my, my career. Uh, but I think it's also important because it's, it's opened my mind up to the, uh, the situation that a lot of young people find themselves in these days. 
uh, with really not feeling that they've got much of a future in their career. Uh, and I think if there's any way I can help to uh, support the Beard of Butte Society in, in their programs, uh, that, that'll be very fulfilling for me. So, so really it's, um, it's uh, great to receive the reward and, and great to really start to think about what maybe I could do to help the society uh, going forward. It's a strange thing, but I, if you look back, uh, there was a book written uh, some years ago by an American, How the Scots Invented the Modern World. And it's medicine, religion, missionary work and so on, education, because uh, when the Scottish Enlightenment came along, we had free education in all parishes in Scotland, way ahead of the rest of the world. People were coming to our universities to see how we were doing things. And it's still a very good system. I know we keep criticising. But there is something in the Scottish character about you're the wee guy against the big world, but lots of wee guys before you have succeeded. There's just something about going out there, and I, you know, I, I've worked around the world and pitted myself, if you like, against the very best in other nationalities and so on, and you're just as good as they are. Just as good. So I... There is something about Scottish character, and you have lots and lots of role models, chemists and Nobel Prize winners, and physicists and educators and, and so on, politicians, business people, lots and lots of role models that you can look to. It's astonishing, you know, Scotland has produced people like Andrew Carnegie, who became the richest man in the world from very, very humble beginnings, went to America and, and made his fortune. Tom Hunter today, was selling gym shoes out of the back of a van and made hundreds of millions of pounds because he built a business, created employment, and it just, it was just his idea, a dream, and he actually realised that dream. Everyone can realise their dream. I'm Amanda McMillan, the Managing Director of Glasgow Airport. Gosh, there's lots of advice people give you, and, and I think it is about listening to lots of people and just taking lots of advice, because none of us really know how to, to navigate life, but I think my grandfather was probably the biggest influence on me. He had been somebody who didn't really have very much, but he honestly believed he was the luckiest man alive. Um, and I, when I was really young, I couldn't understand that because he didn't have any material wealth. He didn't have, he always worked. He worked down the pits, he drove buses. He was constantly striving to keep his family, but he honestly believed that his, he and his whole family were the best thing ever. And I think I got from him that advice really which was to enjoy what you have and to work hard and to celebrate what you achieve and, and to believe in yourself because he did even though they had very little and um, he believed he was the luckiest guy alive and I, I've realized as I've come through life that he was the luckiest guy alive because if you believe you are then you are and that's the secret to um, I think a happy working life and a happy life you know advice is only advice and is you don't necessarily have to act on it different people will offer different advice take it in and to the mix and then decide what it is you want to do my name is Craig Clark and I'm the founder and CEO of Clyde Space I think the most important thing to remember is to do what you feel most passionate about because you've got much better chance of succeeding don't do something just because you think that's the right thing for you to do I think the, the piece of advice that was probably most important to me was someone telling me that I should do what I wanted to do and not what other people wanted me to do. Um, because I think it was sort of expected. I, I, I was very successful at school. I had lots of good grades. And it was sort of expected that I would study medicine. And for a while I thought, yeah, maybe I will do medicine. But I thought, really want to be a doctor <laughs> and it was just that piece of advice came at the right time you know do what you really want to do um, so I did I studied chemical physics instead of medicine so I always tell my undergraduate students and I tell my graduate students that it, it doesn't matter how smart you are it's how hard you work and I was always brought up with the mantra that working hard gets you everywhere and from my hiring perspective, I would rather hire a graduate student that has a B plus 
but works incredibly hard and is passionate about his or her subject, rather than someone who is naturally gifted but is lazy. Hey, my name is Scott Greer. I'm the former chairman of, of Logan Air. So I think everyone gets a lot of advice, and some you take and some you don't, but my sport is golf. And I do remember the words of the, the great Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones was one of the greatest golfers of all time, an American, who in 1930 won what was then the golfing Grand Slam. Sadly, only a few years later, he was afflicted. He had some debilitating disease and was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. And his great words, which I think are an inspiration to all of us, and to the young people coming through today, just the same as they were to me, was, in life, as in golf, you play the ball as it lies. And I took that to mean that you get some good hands dealt, you get some bad hands, you get some good breaks, you get some bad breaks, but at all times you have to try your level best to make the best of any situation. And I think that is good advice. And I think I've tried to do that, and I think it's good advice for a young person coming through today. I'm Dougal Cameron. I'm a time expired academic, uh, and I've been fascinated by railways and aviation and drawing and art for most of my life. I was a professional industrial designer and educator. What inspired me? My father, having moved from the shipyard, John Brown's, to Rolls-Royce just after I was born, and it was his change in circumstances, wages doubling over weekly, allowed me to go to the high school of Glasgow. My mother did not want me to go into the yard. But he, having become a Rolls-Royce, one of the first employees of Rolls-Royce at Hillington, just at the beginning of the war to make the Merlin engine, inspired me with uh, the tales and the talk of Rolls-Royce, this epitome of excellence. And he, although he didn't have Latin, used to quote the statement that was put, carved by Eric Gill on Henry Royce, Sir Henry Royce's fireplace at his home in West Wittering. And in Latin it was quid vis recti factum, quam vis humile praeclarum. Whatever is well done, however humble is noble. A wonderful statement, a wonderful statement, because it includes everyone. The guy sweeping the street, as much, you know, as the brain surgeon to do things well. I think for me, the biggest lesson that I can now stand here at 46 and say is to people is be authentic. Um, be authentic every time you're talking to people. Tell them what you really feel, what you're really thinking, not what you think they want to hear. And I think if you are authentic with yourself and with everyone around you, you will go a long, long way in life. And too often young people think they have to turn themselves into something else. So any young person out there, I'd say, be yourself, be authentic in every single occasion. Integrity is everything, I think. I think it is, um, you want to be known as dependable and reliable and honest. And I think um, a man of integrity is uh, a hard earned, earned title. Uh, and it's one that it takes a long time to achieve and are very easily lost. So I think people should be mindful of that all through their lives. Integrity is everything. You lose that, you lose everything. I think passionism it does play an important role. I mean, I, I think if you are doing scientific research, you sort of have to be really passionate about what you're doing because it, it, it takes over. I mean, you're, you're dreaming about your research, you're thinking up new approaches, you have new ideas all the time. So passion that informs and illuminates and propels people into action to do things is perhaps one of the most important things. And, and really taking that passion and, and, and seeing things develop from that is something that's very important. And I think many successful scientists have that. The actual energy, the momentum, uh, which makes you determined to do particular things. It can be misguided, misled, uh, 
and a proper nuisance to your fellow people. But nonetheless, passion is what has changed the world. I think the, the society's work is really important because I think it's really important to emphasise to, to young people um, the value of education and where that can take you. Um, and I think it opens up a lot of opportunities and doors. If I was told um, 15 years ago that I'd be in Toronto um, as a chemistry professor, I w would have laughed. Um, and I think um, my education um, and my ability to get an education uh, really helped my career a lot. Having a, a good education as the basis for you know, starting your career, no matter what it is, uh, is really essential. And uh, I found that, um, of course, when I started work, uh, that the learning had only begun. And uh, really, I didn't know an awful lot at all. So, you know, le learning continues all the way through your life. And, uh, you know, you learn something new every day. So really being prepared to, to learn as well after you've, you've graduated is very important and continuously develop your skills and your capability. I think the combination of wanting to work hard and having the backbone of a really good education has been a big part of my ability to do every job that I've taken on. Initiative is important, taking the initiative when it comes along and that's, you know, in any field. Um, not being afraid to just go out and, and you know, grasp things when they, when they turn up. I mean, looking back, you, you, you can always see kind of crossroads where was it just luck or chance and, and the fact that you were there at the right time and that something came up and you were able to follow it. And, and I think everyone who has been very successful thinks that, you know, luck has been an important part of that. But I think also very often you make your own luck. You know, not everyone sees these opportunities when they appear in front of them. So I'm not sure it's entirely luck, always. Um, but, but I think just, just taking the opportunities when they arise and, and not being afraid to do something that's maybe seen as being a little bit crazy. You know, just go with your, your gut feelings and, and um, see what happens. I have been an enthusiast for railways, for aviation, for drawing and for many, many other things throughout my life and it sustains you that really does sustain you in the watching hours of the night but to be an enthusiast for something is to have a life of your own if you like which cannot be damaged by other people no matter what authorities may try to do no matter what the bureaucrats may try to impose upon you if you're an enthusiast for something you will always win and it to me you couple it with the one other thing which is most important, eccentricity. The ability to see the world from a different slant, from a different viewpoint than most of your fellows. To be quite prepared to be laughed at, to be derided, to be joked about, to be disenfranchised, and yet pursue your own unique vision. Uh, is to be an eccentric coupled to enthusiasm and these are the people that make the civilized world. Wear your anorak with pride, I say. I found over my career that having fresh ideas has been one of the biggest secrets to my success. I still get ideas every morning, I wake up with ideas. And I, I thought to start off with that you had to be really clever and be the cleverest and smartest person to build ideas. They don't actually think you just need to do things you love and then the ideas flow. And I think the difference between having an idea and being successful is that you convert your ideas. So I'd encourage everybody to have their ideas but do something with them and bring them home. And if you have a great idea and you bring it home, you will be a success, I think. I have to say that starting a company is probably one of the most difficult things that you could ever imagine it is not an easy thing to do, but with the right amount of determination um, and a vision of where you want to go, it's possible. Whatever you think you want to do, I honestly believe you can ultimately do it. You might have some knocks along the way, 
but actually if you begin with the end in mind and persevere, I think most people get there. While perseverance is important because things don't always go to plan, and if you gave up every time something didn't quite work out the way you wanted, you wouldn't really get anywhere. You have, you have to stick at it. You have to try and work out why it hasn't gone the way you wanted it to go or think it would go, and, and really st stick at a problem, worry away at it, and, and uh, then you might find something really interesting. Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of going into the unknown. Assess the, the risks and so on, but don't be afraid and never be afraid about you not being good enough. You know, no, no one ever learned anything without making a mistake. So, you know, you've got to be prepared to accept mistakes, accept the disappointment of doing something wrong, uh, and then move on and learn from it and, you know, uh, improve in the future. I, I just keep saying this to people, don't worry about making mistakes. You can recover from it. Everybody, everybody makes mistakes. And I made some quite big ones in my day. When things go wrong, you've got to be quite big and brave and stand up and accept responsibility. If you allow it to, to fester and you try to conceal it or something like that, it, it just leads to bigger problems. And you actually don't feel good about yourself inside either. And so when I've made a mistake or I've inherited someone else's mistake, you stand up and you tell people, this is where it's gone wrong and this is where I've gone wrong. Uh, so that, that's probably the most important uh, lesson I've learned. You need to fully apply yourself to achieving your vision. I think if you, if you go into it half-hearted, you never achieve it. You need to apply, you need to, you need to be prepared to apply basically everything you've got to make it work. You can't do anything without taking a risk. Like, really, you've got to strive for anything you want to do. If you, if you put one foot in, you're never going to get anything back. You've got to jump, like, just jump and see what happens. Like, you'll never know if you don't take the risk. So maybe doing, like, applying for the scholarship's not a risk, but it's something like, what if you don't get it? But I didn't care if I didn't get it. I just wanted to try. And trying is the most important thing in anything you do. Everything you've got, you do has to be with your whole heart. And this is something that I saw in a lot of people in that, with that scholarship. Every person I met was wholeheartedly involved in everything that they do. And passion drives all of them and passion is what drives me. The deal that the Bear Butte Society proposes to the youth of Scotland is, if you'll work hard, we'll do all we can to assist you to realize your dream.